But often, and this is fairly universal when I talk to people, whether they're individuals or businesses, is on one hand, anyone with an iPhone can pick up and start a podcast. There's a very low barrier to entry, which is fantastic. And like most things, when you get into it, it's a little bit more complicated um, than you originally thought. Welcome to Audio Branding, the hidden gem of marketing. Sound plays a more important role in human behavior and our decision-making than you may realize. In this podcast, I'll help you understand the art and science of sound so you can better influence others in business and your life. I'm your host, Jody Krangle. Let's delve a little deeper. This is the first part of our discussion in the Power of Sound Club on Clubhouse about easy options for marketing with digital audio. For those of you that may not know, I host regular weekly Clubhouse Rooms on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. You can check the schedule in my club, The Power of Sound, to see what's coming up if you're interested. We talk about all sorts of things sound-related, including voiceovers, public speaking, podcasting, music, audio branding, voice AI, sound in social media, and of course, digital audio. So all sorts of stuff. This particular recording, and everyone here knew that the room was being recorded, so I do have permission, was called Easy Options for Marketing with Digital Audio, since we do talk a lot about marketing and advertising through sound in this Clubhouse Club. My fellow panelists were Ahmed Bouzid of Witlingo, who has been interviewed on this podcast before, and the highly knowledgeable Jen Dudley of Dante32. And we asked a bunch of questions, including what is digital audio, so we had our baseline understanding of what we meant. Why should we care about digital audio? And what actions can we take to begin engaging through digital audio? They share 10 specific facts about the rapid rise of digital audio and 10 specific things we can do to incorporate it into our engagement mix. It was a really interesting discussion, so settle back and listen in. I think you'll learn a thing or two. I know I did. As always, if you have questions for my guests, you're welcome to reach out through the links in the show notes. And if you have questions for me, visit audiobrandingpodcast.com, where you'll find a lot of ways to get in touch. Plus, subscribing to the newsletter will let you know when the new podcasts are available. And if you'd consider it, I'd love to hear what you think of the podcast. You can leave a review that I'd love to feature on future podcasts, either in written or in voice format from the podcast's main page. And now, here's our Clubhouse discussion about easy options for marketing with digital audio. Well, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are talking with Ahmed Bouzid and Jen Dudley about easy options for marketing with digital audio, because this is becoming more and more important as time passes. And certainly, um, probably COVID sort of kicked this off into high gear. But I think that uh, we're sort of assuming now that it's going to be a part of our lives and we need to get used to that. We need to use it to our advantage, especially as marketers and branders and advertisers and podcasters and anything in between. Uh, So I want to start off by asking Ahmed to introduce himself and let us know uh, who you are and what you do, Ahmed. And, uh, And then maybe if you can let us know what audio, what digital audio is, what do you define it as? Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Jody. Um, as always, thank you for hosting. Thank you for being a great leader uh, in the space. Um, so my name is Ahmed Bouzid. I'm founder and CEO of a company called Witlingo. Um, we're based in um, in uh, just outside of Washington, D.C. in McLean, Virginia. So uh, what is digital audio? Um, so for, for the purposes of this conversation, um, we're going to use the term digital audio, and it's becoming the term um, that's being used to describe things like um, podcasts, um, like, uh, for example, um, radio uh, and music over on the smartphone streaming, right? Um, same thing with the uh, audio over smart speakers, you know, the Amazon Echo, Google Nest, um, um, audio that's uh, that you listen through AirPods, right? So there's a whole constellation of uh, software platforms, as well as as well as hardware, where um, where the the medium or the content is uh, is audio, and we call that digital audio, as opposed to say um, our regular good old radio um, that we that we've been using before, um, that we used before the internet came in, and especially 
um, before, say, 2010 when podcasting took off. So that's what we um, were using digital audio uh, to mean, <clears throat> including also, obviously, social audio, like Clubhouse. That's another manifestation of digital audio. Um, so yeah, so that's who I am, uh, and that's what, uh, that what digital audio means to me. Um, can I pass it on to Jen? Yeah, sure. Um, I wanted to ask you, Jen, to introduce yourself, but I also want to ask you uh, the question of why we should care about digital audio. <laughs> <laughs> Very good question. Uh, so just to introduce myself first, I'm Jen Dudley. I am the uh, founder of Dante32, which is a podcast production company for businesses and brands, and really so this sort of leads into your point about digital audio is we as a company um, really consider ourselves partners in the digital audio space for businesses who are really looking to amplify their brand message through sound, through audio. Podcasting tends to be still where people gravitate towards when they think about using audio in that way. And that's certainly sort of where we started our business is helping support people in that space. But it, as Ahmed was saying, digital audio goes far beyond podcasts. It really is the use of voice and audio and a whole variety of mediums that can complement a business in a number of ways. And that's one of the things that I think is important um, for a business and for marketers to understand the scope of digital audio and how you can use that uh, really is just an additional tool to reach your audience. Great information. Yeah. And a very good point, Jen. Yeah. Uh, podcasting are, is just taking up, like taking over. It's doing <laughs> lots of good things. And I, I think that's a really good uh, thing to have happen right now because I think, uh, unfortunately, I think radio is letting us down. <laughs> Yeah, it's, you know, media in general is just such a shift. It's, it's, uh, you see the patterns kind of across the space um, with streaming versus cable. And I think that, you know, you see similar patterns in the audio world. Yeah, definitely. So I want to move on to some of the specific actions that people can take to engage through digital audio. This was right in our description. So we want to make sure that we cover all of that. And I think that uh, you had said between the two of you, you have 10 points, um, 10 specific facts about the rapid rise of digital audio. So do we want to start there? Ahmed, yeah, do you yeah, have something definitely. you want to? Mention <laughs> absolutely. Um, so let me just frame um, this conversation so that folks know um, what we want to accomplish uh, in this hour. Um, so mainly, what, uh, what we're sort of trying to make the case and help folks make the case, marketers, for example, uh, or folks who are into getting customer engagement or member engagement um, through digital audio. Um, and I, I imagine you are a marketer and you want to convince an executive to give you budget. What do you need to do to do that, to accomplish, to get them to say, yep, um, I will give you $1 million uh, for next year to, or for this year to do what you need to do for the next 12 months. Okay, so um, assuming that the executive is a rational human being, right? <laughs> what do they? Let's uh, hope. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine you're a marketer and you have convinced yourself uh, that um, the digital audio needs to be part of your engagement mix, your marketing mix. Um, what do you need to do to convince your, um, I don't know, your CMO, for example, or your CEO to give you budget? Okay, first you need to give them, you need to give them facts. Let me tell you. Uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, SVP, or whatever. Uh, let me give you some facts about digital audio. You know, first of all, explain what digital audio is, and then, and then here are ten facts. Right after the facts, the ten facts are undeniable that show that this is real. Um, they will. The next question um, from this rational executive would be, well, well, how come? I mean, isn't like audio like video minus? Um, why are you taking minus uh, image? Why are we taking a step back? And then, so there has to be an explanation. Here's why, um, you know, here are the reasons why people are actually going and using audio as opposed to video, as opposed to images, as opposed to texts, okay? Now, let's say you did a good job, and now you have given them facts, and you have given them a rationale uh, that explains those facts and why there's a rise. Um, then, then say, okay, fine, good. So, but why should you, the marketer, why should you get involved in this? Okay, that needs to be answered because it deliver helps me, the marketer, deliver value or help me do my job in the following ways. And again, concrete things. 
okay at this point let's say you know, you know you're doing really well and they're like okay you have convinced me that there is a pattern i understand why the pattern is is what it is um and i uh, i understand that um there is value that you can deliver okay good so tell me tell me what to do exactly um and now if you if you don't know what to do exactly like okay so why should i give you money why don't you go do some research find out exactly what uh what you know what to do you know show me how it fits with all the things you said before and then i'll give you the money but if you're ready and you give them 10 things yeah 10 concrete things you can do then you are basically on your way to you know securing that uh that wonderful budget okay and so i think what we could do is um is follow this structure right 10 facts right 10 reasons and then 10 things to do and we can go them we'll go through them very quickly um so that's what i was thinking that's what um jen and i are thinking to do as far as how to help somebody um make that case now there's going to be a lot of facts and a lot of reasons and a lot of uh, things to do so all of this will be uh, in a page that we'll share with you at the end uh, it'll be url we'll share with you at the end of this uh uh, of this hour so you'll have that you don't need, need to take notes and so it's forth. actually at the top here right now so i've it put is? it at, yeah okay. i put it at the Good. top of the room so <laughs> anyone can check it out while you're you can you're check it out listening to the real thing being spoken uh, right. in real time <laughs> exactly wonderful um and so uh so in the page um Jen, I'm just gonna read, and then you can uh, give you'll give color. So, is that is that is that good with you guys, uh, Jody, Jen? That I will just uh, go ahead, go about that way. Sure, right? go for it. Are you okay. okay with that, Jen? Yeah, absolutely. That works for me, and I feel like we can dive into more specifics and the places yeah. that are of interest for Great. those. Especially attending. things that have to do with content. Like I'm not a content guy; <laughs> I'm a technology guy. So you guys, you know, Jen and Jody, you you guys understand. Um, the medium in terms of the podcast stuff and all that. All I can say is I'll read off like 73% of the population um, have listened uh, to online audio uh, for the last month. So 73% of the U.S. population, 12 and, and older, uh, which is about, uh, what is it, from 68% last year, to 73. So there, it's on the rise and it's substantial. Okay, substantial. I have one question for you, Ahmed, before we mm -hmm. move on. Where are you getting those numbers? Yep. So this page here... Um, probably by the end of today or tomorrow, we will have references. So um, I'm just going to read this, but I'll provide all the references for, for each one of these. Okay. I, did, I just didn't have time to put the links in. Um, it's been one of those crazy days. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go for it. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so trust me, you will have all the references so you can check them out on your own. Um, to 62% of uh, folks 12 and older have uh, listened to a podcast. Uh, again, it's up from 57%. Anyway, numbers that indicate um, that indicate that the pattern is real. Another one would be I'm just not gonna read all of them here. Um, let's see, 73% of uh, folks 18 and older have ridden or driven in a car in the last month uh, using AM FM radio and an audio source in car. Right. Um, so uh, we are seeing more and more of these voice assistants in cars. Right. We are seeing more and more streaming audio in cars. Um, and so more than uh, three quarters uh, have audio, has uh, have digital audio is is pretty impressive. Um, and then 57% um, of voice command users use voice commands daily. So every day, folks who use uh, these voice assistants, they use uh, these, uh, these uh, um, let's say, your Siri or your Google Assistant. Um, and then the last one is more than 70% of teens own AirPods. Again, that's... I think that's a pretty big number. I was asking my son because I read an article today that said there is apparently some kind of a retro fashion now in, uh, in general, in Gen Z. They're going back to, uh, what do you call it, uh, non, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Over the ear or? Yeah, they're using, they're using, they're going back to, um, you know, plugging your, not, not AirPods, right? What do we call it? Headphones, right? Um, but in any case, 70% of teens um, have AirPods. That's pretty big. Are you looking for ways to improve your company's or podcast's impact? You'd be surprised how powerful the use of an intentional audio branding strategy can be. Want to know more? I have a free downloadable PDF that gives you my five tips for implementing an intentional audio strategy at voiceoversandvocals.com slash audio dash branding dash strategy. That location does ask to put you on a mailing list just to send you updates on when the new podcasts come out. 
But if you really don't want to give your email out, I understand. Just contact me directly. My email is all over my website. And I'll make sure you get that PDF without needing to sign up anywhere. If you do sign up, though, you also get access to a resources section called The Studio, where I have videos, white papers and PDFs, discounts from my guests, and snippets of audio from my guests that no one else gets to hear. So maybe it's worth your while. Totally up to you. And of course, if you're looking for voiceovers, you can get in touch with me about that too. Now, back to the podcast. Ahmed, I was just going to jump in with a little bit of color on a couple of the stats. Yeah. And what I think is is interesting in looking, that, uh, looking at that, a um, couple things to call out. One, I think the fact that very few households or a significantly reduced number of households have even have a radio in the house. Yeah. People are still listening in the car. I think that's where um, terrestrial radio tends to still be uh, yep. kicking around the most. And I also think really that idea of voice commands and AirPods. So those last two stats, I think, draw to the fact that, again, beyond a podcast is it's how we're interacting in the world and the difference between um, you know, all of the engagement we have now with whether it's different smart devices in our home, with our phone, with our car, we're starting to interact with voice. And so it's a change in consumer behavior. And I think that's back to Jody at the top. You asked the question about why I care about digital audio. I think that's one of the pieces is we're just starting to see all of the different use cases for how audio is is really embedded in the way that we live and the way that we interact Um with the world around us. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Ahmed, if you want to continue, go mm-hmm. ahead. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> um, so uh, so one, actually one thing that I wanted um, Jen to help us with is um, you, you deal with businesses who are interested in launching these podcasts, right? Um, sort of your bread and butter. Mm-hmm. Um, and so my one question actually I, it just occurred to me, so it was, I was not prepared, is uh, um, how, what, are you, what, how, 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 are you seeing an urgency in these folks saying, I need to get a podcast more now? Um, it's not a loaded question. I'm just uh, wondering, like, how, do you see the urgency versus um, just more people asking for it? Or do you see folks saying, I need to have it, you know, for this or that reason? Yeah, I think that, I mean, I've, we've been in business for about four years. There's definitely been an increase in interest. And I, I think that the reasons for that still vary. Um, And the one thing is, again, and part of this is, as a company, our marketing and branding, but people generally will come to us already with the idea that they want a podcast and that's what they're looking to do. So a lot of those conversations that we're having is back to digging into the why and why they're wanting to start a podcast and sometimes is pulling them back out to say, okay, podcast makes sense, but let's make sure that this is really integrated into your marketing. So as far as an urgency, um, I think it is a little bit on the rise and there's certainly a lot more interest from businesses than there were, um, I would say three to five years ago. And it's, you know, really starting to be um, along the lines of we have a um, a blog, we have a website, we've got social media, um, a podcast is the next thing. And I think um, recognizing that those things can all be connected together and the ability to reuse that audio, frankly, in all of those places, which I know is some of the things we're going to touch on in the kind of concrete applications. Did that answer your question, Amir? Yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. Um, um, and and uh, one, one follow-up question to that, um, which is, these folks, when they uh, engage with you, is it because they've tried to do it before and they're like, you know, it's harder than I thought? Or is it like, you know, this thing is probably not easy and let's just go ahead and, and, and bring somebody in to help us with it? Excellent question. Frankly, it's both. So we have some folks that have started a podcast internally or maybe an executive started a podcast and then, again, realizing that what they thought would be fairly easy is now taking up some full-time employees the better part of their week and so they're looking for help. Or they just realize we've been doing this for a while, we want to know how we can make better use of this or reach a larger audience. And then in some cases it's uh, coming at the start and just saying, um, 
you know, looking for someone else to pick up those pieces. But often, and this is fairly universal when I talk to people, whether they're individuals or businesses, is on one hand, anyone with an iPhone can pick up and start a podcast. There's a very low barrier to entry, which is fantastic. And like most things, when you get into it, it's a little bit more complicated um, than you originally thought. Wonderful. Great. Okay. So, um, so that's for the the fact. So we are twenty minutes in. So let's. I just want to cover. Want us to cover the the rest. Um, the next one is okay. Now you told them there are some facts, and they say okay, good. It's impressive. Um, so how come or how, why is uh, digital audio on the rise? Um, so uh, I want to cover this here uh, because I just actually I'm gonna pl- I'm gonna do something shameful. I'm gonna plug my book that just came out a month ago. Um, Congratulations, on, uh, by the way. <laughs> thank you very much. On uh, on O'Reilly Media, and it's um, the title is "The Elements of Voice First Style." Um, I probably should have a link in this page to it. Um, and it's all about um, it, it, it's about how to design a highly usable voice bot. So, what is a voice bot? A voice bot is maybe like the Amazon Echo, right, when you talk to it. So that's a voice bot or, or Google Nest or even you pick up your phone, you call your bank and you get that automated um, system, right? Um, most of those are not very well designed. Um, this book is to help folks design these voice bots well. So what does it mean to design a voice bot? It means things like what does it say? How does it respond to, um, to what the person says? How does it guide the person to go through? Uh, the you know the experience, <clears throat> how smart should it be? A lot of things that can make um, that experience a lot more pleasant than otherwise. Anyway, um, so in that book, uh, there's a chapter where I delve into audio and why audio is on the rise, right? How come people I know are gravitating towards audio? Um, and and the question that I provide there is this is part of a pattern uh, in technology always. Um, in digital technology or any other technology where we go and we and folks want um, folks want to do things more and more easily right so when when computers were introduced we were able to at our home um, or you know way before when it was very expensive at our university we could go and we could write computer programs and so forth and then as things became cheaper we could do it at home but we could do it only through dial, right? So you dial and it's very slow and so forth and you could do only certain things. And it was all, you have buy, you have to buy software, install it, and it was very tedious. Then it became easier with the cloud, it became easier with Wi-Fi um, to do things at home. And then when the, when the, when the, when the smartphone came um, into the scene, now you could do things at home and somewhere else, right? You could do things, uh, you know, your whatever at home and, and, and uh, outside you could, uh, you know, make a phone call, you could send a text, whatever you are, which was a massive, massive thing, right? Now you can do more things in different places, right? Um, so the shift from being at home uh, and the, mob- uh, uh, the shift that mobile brought is you're able to do things in, more, in a lot more places than simply in your home, in the la- in the lab if you're in university, or in the office. Th- those were the three thing- places where you could do things that had to do with the internet, right? With the introduction of, of mobile, you could do it anywhere. Now, um, what is in common amongst all these is that you could do them by typing and looking at stuff, right? So you could do them only in the situations where um, your eyes and your hands um, could be captive, right? But in situations where your eyes and hands were busy, you couldn't. So, example, if you're uh, preparing food, you can't be typing unless you, you know, stop, you wash your hands, you type something. Or if you're driving, you can't look at the screen unless you want to have an accident. So, you, you know, uh, so uh, for those situations, and then lots and lots, if you think about our life, right, when you are potting a plant, when you're fixing your car, when you are fixing your bike, when you are mowing the lawn, all these, your eyes and hands are busy. Um, and so since we human beings are greedy, we just want to be able to do things in as many situations as possible. So in addition to now we can do them everywhere, now we also want to do them in those situations where our eyes and hands are busy. Um, so the first two things in why digital audio is on the rise is your eyes, digital audio, for example, talking to Echo or listening to a podcast through your AirPods allows you to do things when your eyes and hands are busy. So maybe you're preparing food and you're listening to the podcast 
or maybe I don't know you are um, looking at uh, you know an album uh, you know of pictures uh, your, uh, your eyes are busy and you, you can listen so you don't have to look at the screen so one and two is when it enables eyes in the situation that your eyes and hands are busy to to do something to communicate with the brand to ask questions to listen and so forth um, also number three is minimal effort right to create content um, so if you want to, to create content, you don't need to, you know, to, you know, to wash your hands and type, you just talk, right? So it's, it's, uh, it's easy for an, everyone can do it. If you can talk, you can create content. Um, and um, also minimal uh, in, in terms of receiving content, right? You just, you know, you're passively receiving it, right? It, it's not a lot of effort where you have to go and you open your laptop or you log in to look at the thing, just listen. Um, also, audio is very rich compared to text, right? Even compared to images, right? If you feed the image of someone, right? Um, and then you hear a five second or 10 second of someone. If I give you an image of Martin Scorsese and I give you five seconds of him talking, I guarantee you can tell what kind of a character he is because he talks very fast, right? Um, right? So you can immediately tell that he's a hyper kind of a guy from the way he talks as opposed to an image of him, right? So the image is not as rich in terms of conveying character as voice and audio. Um, uh, it, it just brings brings the humanity to life when you hear someone talk. We hear, you know, we hear male, female. Most, you know, you can hear their age sometimes. You can hear their accent. You can hear their maybe where they came from, their region. You can hear a lot of stuff that. If it's not stereotypical, you'll be able to at least get a sense of who they are. Also, their character, right? Are they hyper? Or are they easygoing? Their mood, are they irritated? Or are they, I mean, if you're somebody's piece of text, unless they're cursing, you can't really tell, you know, how they feel, really. Um, also, um, you know, the broadcast aspect. So right now I'm talking, so, and everybody's listening at the same time, right? Um, if I, you know, when my echo gives the time, everybody around can hear it. It could be a minus, but it's also a plus because it's just one with one burst of audio. A lot of people can hear it. Also, it's ephemeral in the sense that it comes and goes. Again, could be bad, also could be good, right? You know, if I go, if I want to find out how the Orioles are doing, I go to my laptop, I open a tab, I go here, and then I have a tab to close. So, um, so there is a lot of persistence there, which again is good in some use cases. But there are some use cases where you just want to go, ask a question, move on. I want to, I want to ask, ask receive. I don't want to clean anything. Um, it's gone. Um, and then, um, and then it's it's. Uh, I think this is my favorite, which is when I'm listening to a story, I'm listening to a podcast. My imagination is activated, right? I have sort of space to shape it into how you know. Sometimes you give faces to folks, and as you listen, it's just it's you're not completely you know, um, being told exactly what to see and, you know, like a movie or like what they're telling you. They're giving you a lot of information. Here it gives you a room right, to bring in yourself, bring in, you know, your perspective um, of the world when you're listening to something. Anyway, so those are sort of the very quickly um, the top 10 things that make um, audio uh, very compelling. But the main thing really is the fact that it's eyes free, hands free. Okay, wanted to get through that just so that, uh, any questions on this? Uh, and make sure you buy the book, by the way. <laughs> um, I have also mentioned to people that they can put a question in the room chat if they don't want to come up onto stage sure. to ask their question themselves. But if anyone okay. wants to raise your hand and ask a question, you are more than welcome to do so. We will have you up on stage to ask your question and uh, get it answered. Because this is the place to ask if you have been wondering how to use digital audio in your own marketing and advertising. I know we're all dealing with a lot these days, so I really wanted to acknowledge those that have gone out of their way to leave an honest review of this podcast. Audio Lover 1429 writes, Great audio about audio. What's not to like? Jody takes her listeners on a journey exploring the art and science of audio, great stories, and some deep insights into why audio is so hot today. Beautifully produced, and Jody makes it fun. I appreciate your appreciation, Audio Lover. I'm glad you learned something by listening. Thanks so much for your review. And now back to the show. All right. So, um, so the next thing is ten concrete things marketers and engagement executives can do. Um, and the first one, obviously, is I think, and I think everybody is, uh, but I don't think everybody is. I think 
everybody should launch a, a podcast or you know a mini cast or micro cast. I'm gonna let Jen talk about that because I don't know much about podcasting really. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. Well, I think we talked a little bit about it. And I, I imagine, again, it tends to be where people are introduced to the idea of digital audio is through a podcast. I think a lot of the things that Ahmed, Ahmed had mentioned in terms of why digital audio is on the rise, the engagement um, and what you can get, you know, again, it's a rich medium. You get a lot of out of a out of voice. One thing that I wanted to add in there that was a, actually a recent conversation I had with a client was talking about, you know, why audio or why a podcast over written material. And this is a marketer who had a lot of experience with print, but was struggling a little bit in how to translate those messages to audio. Because again, there's a low barrier to entry, but in order to maximize the benefits of audio is really having to think about the message and how you're delivering it a little bit differently. And I think one of the advantages is we're inundated, frankly, with media, video, audio, copy. But when you're reading something, we've, we've all become so conditioned, I think, especially with advertising messages when we're reading them, um, that it's easy to be skeptical if you think about reading a customer testimonial. But it's very difficult, I think, to, unless you're a professional actor, um, sometimes even then, to, uh, you know, hide your original intent in the spoken word. And so that emotion, the intent, the authenticity, which is overused word, but can come through in voice in a way that it, I think is much different and can be a lot richer than text, which goes to um, both a podcast and I think digital audio in general. That was a little yeah. bit of a longer answer, but thanks for letting me <laughs> riff. It's a good answer. Um, I, I also wanted to point out that uh, over the last few years, um, what I call people's BSO meters <laughs> have been yes. off the charts. <laughs> so uh, if audio gives you an opportunity to make a more, um, a deeper connection, a more um, authentic connection, you know, yes, authenticity, there we go again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, um, but if it gives you that opportunity to really reach inside someone's heart and give them a peek into what your heart has to say, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's a good thing. And audio does that. It's really hard for other mediums to do that in quite the same way. Mm -hmm. And I think arguably even more than video, that's something else we hear quite a lot is, you know, if companies are trying to get a thought leader, employees, um, even customers to share, it, having video is a lot more intimidating than audio. And I think people people respond then differently. So again, yeah. I think that's one of the benefits of this as a medium specifically. I like to kind of turn that on its head too, because I liken this to turning off the sound when you're watching a movie. So if you happen to watch a movie and maybe you're watching a horror movie and you don't really want to be scared, what do you do? You turn off the sound, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you don't turn off the the picture because that will give you a hint as to what's actually happening. <laughs> but, right. But if you turn off the sound, then you aren't scared. Mm, the emotion is, is the taken emotion out. is lost. Exactly. So so people use the audio to make you care. Mm. So think about how that's being used in advertising and marketing and branding. If mm -hmm. you just use the visual, yeah, you get the idea of what they're about. Okay, sure. But you don't really care. Sure. And audio is what makes you care. This has been part one of our Clubhouse discussion. Well, that's the end of this episode. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you heard, why not tell a friend about this podcast? It's available in all the usual locations. Until next time.